All right, everyone, you just had a federal court decision over the uh, assault weapon ban in the state of Massachusetts. The ban has been upheld by Judge Dennis Saylor the Fourth, I believe it is. Interesting. A lot of Dennis's in the family. It must be Dennis the Menace more than anything else. Uh, here's the problem, though. Link in the description archived, of course. The judge predicated this decision on saying that there was a, hist a historical norm of uh, dangerous and unusual weapons being regulated within the United States, all the way back to the uh, founding days, the 1790s. Only he doesn't cite any case law with regards to this. That's because there is none. You see, up until the Cruikshank decision in the 1870s, there was no gun control of any kind in the United States. It did not exist. No founder, in fact, nobody who participated in the revolution, was alive when the first anti-gunnery existed in the United States in the middle of the 19th century. We're talking about 80 years later. Didn't exist. Uh, there is none. That's why there's no case law cited. I mean, you could probably you could cite case law from the 1890s or the early 20th century, but the problem is that falls a little bit short of Bruin now, doesn't it? Bruin commands, this is a Supreme Court decision, it's being ignored by multiple courts, which means SCOTUS really needs to fucking get the balls and, uh, and assert itself. You can't make a decision and then never enforce it, uh, which is what SCOTUS right now is doing. And this is a significant enough issue that they really should expedite reviewing some of these cases. You've got a separate case in the state of Vermont. I'm sure that the Vermont State Supreme Court will rule against the plaintiffs, the uh, Vermont sportsmen, by the way, uh, almost 100% chance. They've already made their decision. Oh, yeah, the government's allowed to ignore the Second Amendment. It's perfectly fine. Just ignore McDonald v. Chicago, D.C. v. Heller, and the Bruin decision. Uh, if you ignore all existing modern case law from the Supreme Court, then everything's hunky-dory. The judge claims that these provisions exist, but never names the provisions. This has happened multiple times recently, and it is very, very dire, this situation. Our legal system has begun to ignore the norm, which is to bring up actual case precedent in making your decisions. I'm, I'm deciding on the legality of this law. I go back through law, I have my clerks go back through it, I go back through it, and we look at prior law, prior rulings. Is there a precedent here? Is there some standing or no standing for a claim that's being made? Where's the evidence? If you're going to make a decision, and your decision is predicated upon case law, uh, then you should probably show the case law. That's the th they've, they've begun to ignore this basic premise within our legal system. We're, we're uh, deviating strongly from our civic precedent at the moment. The Colorado decision's the same way. They ruled that Donald Trump was ineligible to be on the primary ballot because he had engaged in insurrection. But there was no legal case upon which that was actually prefaced. It was nothing more than the court issuing a de facto opinion without anything to base that opinion on. That's not generally how things are supposed to work. If you're going to, for instance, you say, court rules in and says, this person's not allowed to own a gun because they killed someone, but there was never any murder case. They never got charged with murder. Uh, apparently the courts can now do that. Uh, apparently they can just uh, operate as judge, jury, and executioner without a trial even having commenced. This is the same way. There is no case law. There is not one mumbling goddamn word from the 1700s or the early 19th century with regards to any form of regulation on firearms or any other weapons. Merchants with their own vessels had their own cannons. People made their own balls, they made their own powder, they made their own weapons sometime. Smiths were everywhere. There was no licensing, there was no regulation, up until the end of the 19th century. It all begins in the 1870s. That is the first case law that any court can possibly point to outside of territorial rules, which we'll get into in a moment, as a, pre as a predicate for gun control. That's the only precedent they can now. Territorial law. And this extends back beyond the 1870s. In the non-incepted territorial United States, out of, out of a sense of pragmatism, settlements tended to be directly democratic. Or they were run effective. An official or a body of officials was elected. Um, some things were handled in a directly democratic fashion, sometimes in the uh, more republican fashion, eh, sort of a mix of the two. So a sheriff was potentially permi uh, permitted, if given latitude by the population, to, for example, confiscate firearms and hold them for people while they were in camp. So you go outside of the camp, you can take your gun, because there's, there's engines out there and ba black bears and shit. But if you're in camp, he could impose a rule, you're no gunplay allowed, we're not going to have duels in this town. 
or you can't carry it openly on you. You, you have to store it with the sheriff or something like that. But that's because the Constitution didn't fully apply because they were territories. There was no state government because it wasn't a state. It was just a territory. Territorial government worked differently, and a lot of it has to do with rail stations and the Pinkertons and shit like that, by the way. By the way, the Wild West wasn't actually that wild. People generally actually killed each other less out west than they did in the eastern cities, which by that time in the late 19th century had begun to uh, outlaw firearms. Very interesting how the crime rate rose. Wild West weren't so wild after all. Uh, unless you get attacked by wolves, or bears, or people from uh, an indigenous tribe, or something like that. Uh, most people don't know that. They think of it as being all gunslingers, because they, they grew up on gun smoke and bonanza and stuff. It's not actually really how it worked. No, the um, decision here is depraved. It's legally abysmal, because th nothing is even cited in the decision. It's literally just the judge's own opinion. It's not based on anything. Can the judge point out one thing prior to Crookshank that would apply in the state of Massachusetts, for example, that would rise to this level of regulation? And by the way, how is a, a so-called assault-style weapon, they, they use assault-style now instead of assault weapon, a little bit more accurate anyway. They're fooling with your brain with linguistics, by the way, it's propaganda. Uh, they're no different than firearms of similar class that just have a wooden, a wooden finish instead of a black one and don't have a pistol grip. There's literally no difference between them. It's a clear-cut violation of the Second Amendment. SCOTUS needs to weigh in and make it clear. They, apparently, they need to refine the Bruin decision, say, okay, here's a, a certain list of types of gun anti-gunnery that states and, and the federal government can engage in. So, no, you're not allowed to take people's standard capacity magazines away. No, you're not allowed to throttle ammo sales, which the government is gleefully doing right now, which just makes uh, the gun manufacturers more money. They're selling that brass and lead real, real quick. Go to the fucking gun store if you don't believe me. Uh, and so forth. That, that's what they would need to do. Apparently, the courts are just going to ignore the Bruin decision until legally compelled not to do so by an additional Supreme Court case. Because quite clearly, this runs afoul of Bruin and the Second Amendment, arguably the Commonwealth of Massachusetts' own goddamn state constitution. It's quite clear. Hell, in the state of Vermont, We've got a bunch of anti-gunnery now, after going 200 years with literally none and not having any fucking problems, pig in a pokery after Sandy Hook, courtesy of our favorite governor, Phil Scott. We were doing fine, and then all of a sudden we got heaped with a bunch of anti-gunnery. The Vermont State Constitution countermands this. The Verm Did you know that, by the way, that Vermont is the only state with that provision in the Constitution that overlaps with and even enhances the Second Amendment? Somehow, now we're one of, one of the most anti-gun states in the Union. There's a fucking bunch of mountains and farms and shit. There's one city in our goddamn state of any significance, uh, which is the Burlington area. It's a general suburbs. Uh, and yet, they're the ones designing policy. I think we know the crux of the problem. Likewise, like, if, if you had a Bruin challenge to Vermont's gun anti-gunnery, which you have right now, under a proper definition of the law, you would not be able to establish that there was any historical tradition of any anti-gunnery in the state prior to this prior decade. It starts in, what was it, 2017 or thereabouts, uh, somewhere around there. That's the first. Other than that, the only thing that you had was a ban on suppression. Which, by the way, was torn apart a couple of years. For a few glorious years, Vermont had absolutely no laws related to weapons unless you used them in an offensive manner. Our crime rate was low. People respected one another. People didn't start shooting one another. They had guns and guns and more guns for 200 years, and somehow we Vermonters managed to live in peace. Supposedly, we should have relapsed into barbarism or something like that. Somehow we made it work. Now the crime rate's going up. Because Vermonters are less well-armed. That does play a role. We should tear apart our uh, state gun control. Uh, but the Vermont State Supreme Court will probably just ignore the Bruin decision just like this federal court did. It's ignorance. Literal ignorance because they can't even cite case law. Like, gee, how did you even get into law? How did you, uh, how did you become a judge? It's uh, inexplicable to me. That's about all. Peace out.